Hey, hey there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast. On uh, this uh, special show, since John and I have been enjoying getting away from the atheist gig, we're talking about the Virgin Mary, and who is beloved of Assyrian Orthodox, Oriental Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox, Anglicans, as many Protestants. So don't you guys dare try to w wiggle out of this thing by saying it's just a Catholic thing, or it's just two Catholics talking about the Virgin Mary. I will reveal my bias that uh, uh, I truly believe that if more Christians love the Virgin Mary, we would have much more unity among Christians um, because that's part of a role, actually. In any case, if you like the work we do here, uh, please support us on redpillreligion.com where we talk about politics, the intersection of culture, politics, and religion. By the way, last night, we, uh, Misha Popoff from Culture Wars Magazine and I had a terrific uh, show on that intersection of religion, culture, and politics and talking about um, nasty things done, uh, 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 the darker side of, of things done but to Jews by ethnic nationalist Jews. That is a uh, hidden history that's, not, that's very interesting. And a lot of our Jewish friends were interested in that too. So we're having interesting conversations every night. We're not a, straight, we're not a Catholic channel, but tonight we're gonna be doing some strictly devotional work to somebody both of us love. By the way, who, uh, we are still running our fundraiser. We're trying to raise a thousand bucks for Freedom from Atheism Foundation and to upgrade to a more censorship free podcast network and maybe better microphone. Uh, okay. Please do support us through PayPal on that on redpillreligion.com. Now, John Wright has joined us again as he always does on uh, Wednesday nights. Say hi, John. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. John and I are both in a low key mood this evening. So uh, we're just going to talk for a little bit about one of our favorite subjects. But please be sure to visit scifiright.com and check out what he's got going on in his blog. I see, I see the latest issue, the latest, I want to say issue, but it's, or episode, but it's chapter. Okay, episode 87, Lost on the Last Continent is out. Man is man. Is our hero, is our hero still struggling on? Our hero is, this is one of the few episodes where the, the, uh, here was facing a moral quandary rather than a physical, uh, a physical being punched in the face or stabbed by a sword, where the uh, basically the pirate captain who has a perfectly good reason to flee from the combat has to decide whether he's going to turn around and go back into the fray when there seems to be no hope at all of success. Oh man, I wonder if he'll make it. No, for all that we're being sarcastic, John's actually a pretty terrific writer. Um, his his his, uh, his style really is reminiscent of. Some of my favorites, um, the, 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 just looking through Lost on the Last Continent. I lost my taste for fiction years ago, alas. I, don't, I can't process it anymore. I just can't read it um, at length. Anyway, uh, something, and you know what? I think that's age because I can't absorb new, new uh, names and faces. Like you get characters in books and you learn their names and you kind of start putting a face to them or an idea of who they are. And I can't bond with that many characters anymore, John. Have you ever well, run into that problem? To help you out, I have made Lost in the Last Continent are all short, bite-sized chunks. They're uh, four pages or less each. And all the main characters have really simple stereotype names and appearances. So you Not can't excuse the two of them. There's a big game hunter whose name is something like Big game guy. There's a beautiful Atlantean girl whose name is something like Girl, and there's a monkey man whose name is Hanuman. Monkey man. So, <laughs> pirate captain, the giant pirate captain is named Grind Gold Tooth. The 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 bottom line is that is a free sample of his his fiction that he's been ongoing for a better part of two years now, I think. Uh, I think his name isn't actually Big Game Hunter Guy. I wish it were in hindsight now. It would have been better than what I picked. Captain Grind is not bad. But yeah. that's, that's the pirate. That's not, that's not my main character. My character's named uh, Colonel Preston Lost. Preston Lost. Well, of course. Lost. Well, no, see, Preston Lost is pretty good. In any case, that's a free sample. But if you go to his blog and you click on works, you can actually buy some of his fiction, which he actually sells for money and stuff. And he's gotten lots of good reviews and is well-respected in the field and has uh, gotten many award nominations and won at least a one, one award I know. Plus he even, he, he hobnobs with some of the big wigs in science fiction. So uh, there you go. Go buy some of his books. That's a I good thing to do. 
personally insulted, both by Arlen Nelson, may he rest in peace, and by George R. R. Martin, may he finish his book. You've been... <laughs> You've been that. personally insulted by both Harlan Ellison I and George R. R. Martin. By the you know, you know by the but, but, but being insulted by Harlan Ellison, you almost can't feel bad about because he was an angry atheist and all he did was insult people. I feel bad. Uh, I mean, I, I was. Uh, it's not even. It's not even an honor. He does it to everyone. Uh, it's just exactly. Shame. No, right. It's like, it's almost I'm like it's, it's almost like by Don Rickles, though you're probably not old enough. No, to right. That no, it's more like a science fiction convention experience point or a, you know, achievement Correct. unlock. Get, get insulted no, by no, Arlen Ellison. If you want my street cred, my, what I actually feel proud about is not only did I go to mass once with Gene Wolfe, may he rest in peace, but I got a when I was consecrated into the Catholic Church, uh, uh, I got a note from Tim Powers, the guy who wrote On Stranger Tides. That was recently made into a into a movie. Oh, really? Absolutely. Well, we'll see. So that's cool. Plus, you know, guys like John De La Rose and uh, Declan Finn and Brian Niemeyer, the young guys. Yeah, By the way, right. free suggestion. Uh, well, you know, we shouldn't be talking about the fiction market here. We're here to talk about the Virgin Mary. So Correct. we're both too we're much too ADHD. Let us move to that. But go buy some of his books. And if you buy twenty five of his books tonight, his wife will make you a cake. No, I, but. Seriously, go check out some of his books. Um, and also, speaking of Mrs. Wright, you'll find her under the name El Jaji Lamplighter, where she has publishes fictions of her, of her own and does professional editor work as well. So go check her out. Now, moving on, The Virgin Mary. Now, we might do another show on this, just because John and I are fairly low energy tonight, but low energy might be an improvement, too. We'll see. Uh, I am getting tired. I, I hear it all the time from uh, atheists. I hear it from fundamentalist Christians. I hear it from some Protestants. I hear it a lot in the manosphere that, uh, uh, well, it's either that we're worshiping Mary as a goddess, or if you love the Virgin Mary, you worship women, or you worship a woman, or you, you become a mama's boy. And the only part of that that's really true is that you might become a mama's boy, but if so, she's the best mama to have. Um, and uh, some of the toughest, roughest bruisers in the world got that way because they had a mom who loved them. I will so, point out, for those of you who are literarily inclined, that Sir Lancelot de Locke, who is in, in uh, stories, is the greatest knight of his knightly age, carried an image of the Virgin on his shield. He was consecrated to her. And speaking historically, all four crusades were fought by Catholics. No Protestants ever fought in a crusade because there weren't any by the time Protestantism rolled around. And That's those right. were sons of bitches in the Middle East at that time. So don't tell me about being a, don't tell me that, that worshiping Mary or even uh, adoring Mary or, or I forget what the technical term is, um, hyperdulia. Don't tell me that admiring Mary and paying respects to her somehow weakens or undermines either a man's manliness or a man's Christianity. The whole point of Christianity is that we use strength on behalf of the weak. The weakness of man, strength, the weakest, the weakest, the weakest of God is the strength of men. The foolishness of God is, is, is greater than the wisdom of men. Christians are the only people who have this idea that women should be cherished and protected rather than just used and abused. I mean, no, no, no offense to my Confucian or Hindu brethren, but they don't really have much respect for the uh, the fairer sex. It's yeah, what what they're getting wrong, and I'm trying to find some appropriate images to bring up. I, I'm just going to do a. I'm going to assume I don't have too much to worry about com Creative Commons wise here. Um, uh, I'm just doing a duck, duck, go search. And if you look through searched images of the Virgin, one of the things that you will find um, is that she will be rendered in many, many, many different styles. So if, for example, you've seen some other image of the Virgin Mary, you're not sure you like it or understand it, you can find others. Some, some, some are more stern, like this one, right? And, or, or, or this one. And some are, you know, very lush and beautiful, like this one. 
and 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 so many others. And and, and I think it's important that people understand that in Christian iconography, that's actually pretty acceptable. Because nobody knows the, the, the real way they looked, right? We don't have photographs. We have a couple of images that we think are a good guess on both of them, actually. But we, ultimately, we can't say we know. And it is the symbol of who they represent that's more important than, you know, one of the things I like to point out to people, that, you know, these images are all packed with meaning. So you see any particular image of the Virgin, it means something. The most important thing to realize is that emotionally, okay, I'll, I hesitate to get too personal, okay, but I will just say, and this is the honest to God truth testimony, when you come from a really broken, messed up home, and really messed up parents, and not trusting anybody <clears throat> at all, <laughs> not being able to trust even those you should be able to trust most intimately finding out that you have a real mom who really really loves you and would never be never hurt you that changes you and i know a lot of the guys listening to this may know what i mean um and that's who mary actually is She's your real mother. And um, when you have that connection, as a man, you become much, much stronger and much, much braver because you know you have a mother who loves you. You simply do. Do you know what I mean, John? Or do you have any observations? I am. Um, the reason why I converted to Christianity is because I had a vision of the Virgin Mary. I uh, was actually instructed not to speak in any detail about this, so I'm able to say that it happened. But I, I don't want to say any. I don't want to say what happened because I was told not to, not to tell. I do not know why I was told not to tell, but I'm going to obey orders because, you know, obedience is a good thing. But I will say that. The idea that the person I met could be regarded either as a goddess or as a deception is is not only absurd, but I find it personally offensive. Because Jesus Christ uh, honored his father and his mother for the same reason that he was baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus was born perfect. He didn't need a baptism, did he? And why did he do it? Why did, he, why did he let the Baptist baptize him? He says, in the, in the gospel, he says, let this be done so that all the forms are fulfilled. Okay? Well, if, he, if he's that strict with himself about all the rules that he, that he laid out for mankind, he's going to be obedient to his mother and his father. He's going to honor them. And there is no other religion, at least that I know of, which has honor thy father and thy mother as part of their core principles. There are other religions who have the golden rule. All the religions, as far as I know, have something like the golden rule. True. But the special role of womanhood in uh, Christianity is even slightly different from that as it is in the, in the Jewish religion. And in the Jewish religion, the mother of the king, which is what Mary is, had a particular legal uh, uh, honor and dignity. She was the uh, counsel for the defense whenever someone was was trying to get a petition to the king and he wanted mercy. They would go through the mom. And you and I talked about this last week. Yes. And there's no reason at all to believe that the that the Davidic king in heaven, the son of David, who we worship as master, is going to change that rule. It's going to change that attitude. It's, it's ironic, if I might say, because a lot of what I call the Bible Christians versus the apostolic Christians, which is, includes, it includes but is not at all limited to the Catholics, um, is because they don't see this laid out in plain black and white for them, they, they've been blinded somehow to it. Because, and we can do another show on this, or I can give people references if you want, 
prefigurations and, and prophecies of the Virgin Mary are all over the Old Testament. Um, and if you understand people like Rachel Fulton Brown and Scott Hahn, and I'm forgetting the other author's name. I'm reading his book right now, too, on the Jewish roots of Mary. Uh, the, book, the book title is Jewish Books of the Mary. I'm, 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 the Jewish Roots of Mary. I'm, I'm forgetting the, the writer's name. Um, she's all over the Old Testament, and she's prefigured all over the Old Testament. And it, you have to understand, you know, the way ancient people approach the scriptures. They didn't approach them the way we did. And, and there's this whole thing called typology, which all the ancients, including the Jews, were into, um, which is to say that a lot of the New Testament texts, if you don't see it, you don't see it, but a lot of the New Testament texts very closely mirror key passages in the Old Testament. And there's all sorts of things not clearly written out. The Eucharist is not clearly written out, and some Bible Christians get rid of the Eucharist. No. The, Trin the Trinity is not written out clearly, therefore some, 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 some Bible Christians throw that out too. Sunday services is not written out. In fact, that's right. A, a theology, theologian who I otherwise respect named Ronald L. Dart, who preaches that we should go back to Sunday services because that's what's in the Bible. You mean Saturday? Saturday. I'm sorry. Yeah, the, sa the Saturday Sabbatarians have always been around. They're 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 ignore Well, I'll tell you what, if you think that they, if you think that the institutional Orthodox Catholic, you I'll use little O, little C. You know the you know the. the on, on that, uh, you're, you're thinking they got it wrong for 2,000 years, and you're going to fix it now? And you're thinking the majority of all Christians got it wrong for all of time, and yet they somehow were right enough to write down a Bible that you're going to take as gospel and to establish other points of doctrine that you're going to accept as gospel. Sunday is not the Sabbath, by the way. We moved the day of, of observation to Sunday because that's the day our Lord was yeah. resurrected. And that's the start of the new day. Um, but in any case, to, to one, they don't see Mary spelled out, but she's there. I'm sorry. She's all over the Old Testament. And in the New, every time she speaks, every time she does everything, it's significant. Every time he talks to her, um, it has significance. And you can, And there's a few places where they'll read it like he's being rude to her. But that's like the most hostile possible read, you know, when he, when, when he, like literally he says, you know, woman uh, to her, he calls her woman a couple of times. There's Bible Christians will literally read that as like a stern rebuke that kind of turns into know your place, woman, shut up kind of attitude. Yeah, but um, And that is so the opposite of what he was actually saying. Do they think God was rebuking uh, the wife of Adam before she was given the name Eve? She's called right. the woman. Right. She is, and for those who think she's a, a, a you know a goddess, she's not. She is one hundred percent dependent on on God. Uh, she is, and she is, and this is your key to understanding what Christians call the Trinity. If you don't have a relationship, if you don't understand Mary, you don't. I mean, the the, the Trinity is inherently mystical, okay, but. Mary is the key to unlocking a certain level of understanding that you can't get otherwise on the Trinity because she is the daughter of the Father, the spouse of the Holy Spirit, um, uh, in a union that is conjugal, by the way, and the and and uh huh, and she is the mother of the son, the mother of the son, that's right, and she is loved by God infinitely on in all these aspects, yet she is nothing at all without Him. Um, she's, she's meaningless without him and she's completely subordinate to him. Yeah. The only reason why Mary is important at all to the Catholics is because Mary points at Christ. That's right. The um, prayer, and the way it works is the way it, say, hmm? one of the prayers we consistently say is asking Mary to reveal her son to us because we'd like her to introduce him to us. The same reason that she introduced him into the world. Yeah. Her role hasn't changed. And by the way, if you're afraid of Jesus, you can go to Mary first and she'll get you there. Is that that happens for a lot of people. If you start exploring Mary because Jesus scares you, and that is not uncommon, uh, Mary is a good person to start exploring. And and I'm not even kidding, man. I, I, I've had guys who would not talk to me about Jesus were curious about Mary. And I think there's a reason for that. I really does. Because she really is 
Look, when Jesus gave her to us uh, from the cross, he said, behold your mother, behold you. He was meaning he's giving her our mo his mom to us. Okay, so that makes him our brother. That's a huge thing, by the way. You want to talk about a personal relationship to Jesus. There you go. You are brother of Jesus Christ. If you accept Mary as your mother, you accept that. You know, so you say you have a personal relationship with Jesus, but you don't, you don't know, you, you don't, you don't know our mom. It just, at some point when you, when you really have this, you don't, how could you, how could you think that he would not honor his mother in heaven? How can you think that if his mother asked him for something, he would, he, would, he would say no. Mind you, don't think he would, she would ever ask him for something that he didn't approve of. But I, I, she would never would because her, her will is, to, is conform wholly to his. So she would never ask for something that he wouldn't do. But he would never deny her. And by the way, that's the ideal relationship between men and women. Yep. Not everybody achieves that by a long shot. No, but the, the feminism is the divine help me if you really want me to put it that way. Um, that's an excellent way to put it because not, she's not, 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 she's not divine, though. I don't know if that's the right title. Um, Let's say she's sanctified. The sanctified help me. The Holy Spirit's help me. God's help me um, by his choice because he made her for that. Yeah. And it's awesome. There's some really deep theology you can get into in all of this. Once you want, he is a king in the line of David. The king in the line of David, his queen was always his mother. He's still alive in heaven, right? Is he king up there? I think he is. Um, where's his mom? Is she up there? Okay. Is she what? She scrubs the toilets? Where's his mom in the heavenly court? You think she's nearby? Just, just see, when they sit there and they say it's not written out in the Bible, well, it kind of is. Because for goodness sakes, really, a Jew, honor thy father and thy mother is a Jewish commandment. Mm -hmm. He is required to honor his father and mother. Now, his, you know, his father is the father in heaven, so okay. But even here on earth, he, he honored Joseph as he's generally considered his foster father. Sure. And I can assure you that uh, jo Joseph is also honored very highly as foster father of Jesus Christ in heaven. Um, What's interesting about this is, I'm suspicious of all the criticism that Protestants and atheists have of Mary because I don't hear a similar criticism about Joseph, even though he was also Christ's father, though he was a foster father. Yeah, who by the, which, by the way, makes him a very fitting uh, 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 saint for our age, given how many yeah. kids out there have grown up with step or how many guys find themselves stepfathers and, yeah. or having foster fathers or stepfathers these days. Yeah. But anyway. We can thank both feminism and the sexual revolution, but those two things go hand in hand. Yes, they do. The disintegration of that, and I hope to I hope to get to that topic in a moment. But I would like to say that you can tell that a you can tell that a criticism is uh, worthy of speaks is suspect when you hear the same people giving two opposite criticisms of the same thing. Now, this is not true in all cases. I've had I've had people who criticize the Catholic Church for being too feminine. At the same time, I've, I've heard uh, that the Catholic Church being criticized for being uh, too against femininity. Sometimes it's, but sometimes it's from the same person. And so when it comes from the same source, you you know the guy doesn't really believe it because he's saying two opposite things. The Catholics are supposed to be the people who, by insisting on contraception, by insisting on no no divorce, by insisting on the woman has to consent to a marriage, we're the only only civilization in history that ever had that as a rule, by the way. Yeah. We're the only one, uh, Every everyone has some sort of marriage ceremony, and everyone usually has some sort of magical or religious ceremony to, to, help, uh, to help commemorate it. But we're the only ones who said, it's a sacrament, and, it, and the legal status is... Holy, the, it's a holy union between two consenting adults, yes. Women must consent. Yeah. And, or, I mean, where do you think the Christians get that? I think they get from the fact that the Roman Catholic Church did not have the same attitude toward women that the Roman Empire had. No. Well, where did they get that? Where's the spirit of the church coming from? Well, it, according to the Christians, and I think even my Protestant brethren would agree to me, if, if the Virgin Mary was born without sin, then she is the highest uh, human creation that God has ever made. Yeah. 
because Christ was Christ, while being fully human, was also fully God. And the Virgin Mary is just a woman; she's just a human. She's a Homo sapiens, like we are. Say, right? It's a lot easier to sympathize with her because he's a little he's a little elevated because of his status and his and how he could have both a divine mind and a human mind at the same time is almost unimaginable. Maybe it is unimaginable. It's a mystery of, of religion. And to fit, and to be a fit vessel to carry him, i.e., when she was pregnant with him, she had to be a perfect vessel, like the Ark of the Covenant. I am By the way, one. again, she prefigures the Ark of the. She's prefigured as the Ark of the Covenant several places in the Old Testament. I'm I, sorry. There was a there's a rather shocking story about Asaph, who is the man who, when the Ark of the Covenant is about to fall over in the mud puddle, puts out his hand to write to write in it to save it. From toppling, and he gets struck dead on the spot. And I always thought that was ridiculously cruel when I was an atheist. But looking back on it now with Christian eyes, I think to myself, why do we think that the mud, which has never sinned against God, is less clean than the man who is not ready for God? Because God is like radioactivity. God is like a gamma bomb. Okay, if you're not ready for Him, if you're not pure, if you're not consecrated, you're not going to survive. The reason why in the Old Testament, uh, yeah, and by the way, we don't need we don't need to think that guy's in hell because we oh, don't. No, no, no. You know, no, I, well, that's something because everybody brings that up. Like that poor guy, <laughs> you know. But there's you don't have to think that he's in hell. He was yeah. God was sending a message. Is the point? God was sending a message. Is the point? But God is the kind of thing that not even Moses could look on his face without dying. The only right. way we can look on his face is through Christ. Right. And that's, and that's promised as, as the beatific vision after, after in heaven. So if that's how holy God is, if God is so holy that it would destroy us if he made himself obvious to everyone, then he's got to find a way to make himself obvious indirectly. Okay? And he's got to consecrate the vessels he comes in. So the reason why I myself do not believe that the, that the, the, uh, the kinsmen of Christ who are referred to in the Bible as brothers and sisters, and I should mention the word in Aramaic also means any male relative, any female relative. Yeah. The same way. The same way in the 1940s, any woman you would call her sister, or uh, among the blacks, they call any other black man brother. You know. Uh -huh. it, it, Japanese say anaki. They call each other brother all the time. They, they, the, the Japanese call any older woman uh, grandma. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, and so on and so forth. Well, so, yeah. I don't believe that Joseph actually consummated his relationship with his wife is because he must have known about Asaph. Heck you yeah. really would, I mean, really? I, I, I just find it impossible to believe. It, to, to think that the vessel that carried Jesus therefore just, you know, no, no. And this is why it's also theologically ridiculous to think she gave birth to other kids. Yeah, um, right. and, and that's not biblically, uh, to think that she had ki other children is not biblical. There's no no evidence of that in the Bible. It's Sorry. Trouble. Look up the names of the people who are said to be his brothers and sisters. You yeah. will find the names of their fathers and mothers. Now, yeah. some of them, unfortunately, also had a mother named Mary. But there were at least three or four Marys. There were three Marys sitting around at the, at the foot of the cross when he got crucified. That's right. There was at least three that when, uh, when he was erected. There was Mary, Mary, the mother of James, uh, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, uh, Mary, who's simply known as the other Mary. I, I sometimes I sometimes think I want to meet other Mary, St. Other Mary, pray for me. I, I wonder who she was. But she was the uh, mother of Clopas, who was the guy that Jesus met on the road to Emmaus. Oh, really? OK, that's pretty cool. I, I, you didn't go that deep for me, but. Guys, we've worked it out. There's no, there's no other name to children of Mary anywhere in the scriptures. There's no evidence of other children by Mary either. There just isn't. I mean, you can believe that. You can believe that doctrine, but it will be a doctrine you've made up. You've made up people who are not named in the Bible. I insist on that. Well, it was never insisted upon in the old in the old days. There was some discussion of it in the in the uh, Anti Nicene Fathers, but uh, generally, uh, uh, they either thought that it was other male relatives or they 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 thought that maybe it was Joseph's children from an earlier marriage was one of the two theories that they... That yeah, they and those, those, both of those theories are both still alive because nobody can tell for sure. We don't know. That wasn't a detail that was recorded, but there's no evidence of these other kids. So if you choose to believe that, you're choosing to make up a doctrine simply because it makes sense to you, which is another way of saying it is hazardously close to a doctrine of men right. or a woman if you're a woman. But, I mean, really, you've made this doctrine up. It's it just is to refer to the species the same way we use the word dog to refer to dogs both male and female 
And here's the thing. Because she is not a such object, this also takes away the entire uh, goddess allure. She, uh, to, to be, to, I, I, I always hesitate with this, this language, but it, it's true. St. Maximilian Kolbe said it and others, others going way back in the church. The relationship with the Holy Spirit who overshadowed her, impregnated her, is conjugal and is therefore only, you know, she's not a sex object for any of us. Well, any, any nun is also going to have a conjugal relationship because they're all brides of Christ. Right. Um, I think we're in I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, the, the, well, I mean. What I think about that is. She's literally I mean, penetrated at all times by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, well, you if know. you read that Milton, he speculates that that the angels in heaven and the and the uh, saints uh, are able to intermingle their entire substances, and so that what we have on Earth as erotic love is only the the two dimensional shadow of a much deeper three and four dimensional reality of That's joy and heaven. Who, who even, talked about this? You don't even have words for such a thing. Yeah, right. Exactly. Who was writing about that? John Milton. When when Adam asked about uh, sex and love in heaven. Milton insisted that Adam and Eve had had conjugal. Oh, but yeah, Mil, 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 isn't, isn't he a wicked, uh, wicked one anyway, Milton? Well, anyway, um, let's go yeah. back to Our Lady. Let's the Puritan, but he's not, uh, he's not wicked. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, maybe I'm thinking well, of another guy. Eve didn't have sex before the fall. I think they did. Oh, sure. Um, so, in any case, yeah, she's not a sex object, and that changes her relationship for men and women both. She is not a sex object ever. For uh, she, for us, she is your mother. So, um, your mom is in heaven, and she's totally your mother. That's your proper relationship to her, too. She's also a queen, and that's your proper relationship to her, too. She's never going to be your woman. She's mm -hmm. taken. She's your mom. Um, for women, this... Huh? why the moderns hate her is because modern society is as obsessed with erotic love as any society possibly could be. Yep. We talk about it all the time. We have pride parades for, for various sexual picadillos that are specifically set aside for one flavor of sexual oddity or another. We talk about sex all the time. We talk about having a constitutional right to love anyone we wish under whatever conditions we wish. But the one thing we never talk about is what's the role of women in a society where, on, excuse me, I should say, the only kind of love I never hear spoken about is marital love, where you're having conjugal relations with your wife to produce a child, because that's the most fun I've ever had in my life. I can't speak for any other married man, but that's it's a lot more fun than having an affair, where uh -huh. the constant danger and... and uh, uh, and the betrayal and the, the the eventual inevitable betrayal by you or the other. Even uh, if you get away with it in this life, you have whenever you have sex with someone, you give her part of your soul. And yeah. if you do it for a uh, if you hire a whore, so it's just you think you can just have the physical sensation without the emotional, spiritual, and mental and moral component to it, it's because you don't know what the heck you're doing. You don't understand how human beings work. Yeah, you bought into the lie. You bought into the lie that it is nothing but tingly nerve endings and and chemical hormones and oxytocin and serotonin and huh? Someone has convinced you that you're a meat robot. You are not a robot, sir. Okay, no, no one is. No. But and, to, and, and in order to carry across this lie, they have to say sex is just a physical object. That's why sex outside of marriage is what is what they really think is amazing, and Sex where there's no possibility of procreation, completely sterile sex, or, or acts that are not even sexual acts, acts that are just uh, sexual perversions, uh, they adore. Well, over and against that is a woman who is both a virgin, and you have to admire virgins because they, of course, have enough self-command and enough prudence not to... Uh, Give uh, themselves away cheaply. themselves to another man, except for a man who's going to be a good father, permanently, uh, a virgin has enough hot, has enough self-esteem, has enough worth, not to be thrown away like like garbage. Okay, right. Not to, not to throw not away to something holy. That's right. Not, not to, to throw away God. something spiritual. And the price tag for a wife is the man has to say, uh, 
I worship thee with my body and all my worldly goods I thee endow. He's got to say my entire life is now devoted to you. I'm going to protect you. But, you know, right. Okay. But the woman has, her part has to say the same thing and say, I will love, honor, and obey you. That obey part is very unpopular these days, but it's it's whole part and parcel of the whole male-female thing. It's part of the whole shtick. Right. It's, it, it, it actually, at some level, makes sense. Because here's the thing. People who've only seen dysfunctional relationships, and, and I see this even in some Christian circles, they seem to think that the, 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 the patriarchal authority figure is brutal and scary and that comes up from father issues either in women or men it comes from father issues yeah. or mother issues i do think some who had terrible mothers don't like the mother virgin mary because they had a terrible mother and it needs to go the opposite you realize no your terrible mother was not your real mother your real mother is the perfect mother in heaven who would never be that right. screwed up mother who messed you up yeah, and, so. and, and i can let me let me let me mention a few other things john Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, may I finish? May I finish my thought? That'll that'll give you the, the sure. Moment. Go ahead. Sure, go ahead. Our society has gone insane with their mother issues and their father issues, just like what you were talking about. Because yep. the only kind of sex they're interested in is sterile sex, and so they hate mothers. And the only kind of love they're interested in is erotic love, so they hate virgins. And yet, the Virgin Mary is both. She's the highest form of womanhood, both as a maiden and as a matron. Say. So that's why they hate her, and that's why they make up these outrageous arguments that say we Catholics are either worshiping her or that we're abusing women. And somehow at the same both time. False. We both, both we are both, false. We yeah. both, we both bow to a queen and we're out to oppress women somehow simultaneously. We that's bow true. to a queen, but she bows to a king, and we <laughs> all bow to him. And that's how that works. That's how that works. Mom, and, and, and mom being a functional mom never would even think or dare to overrule dad. Correct. Or do anything that dad would not approve of. Correct. However, dad would never deny her any reasonable right. request. Right. Because in return for the obedience of the woman in a, in a functional marriage, the man gives her his everything. I'll make you a house. I'll put a roof over your head. Here's the here. Take take my wallet. I'll die for you if I have to. Okay. And we're together forever. There's no divorcing. That's Forget how it's supposed to work. Ever because if you have any kind of divorce, even adults who get divorced when their children are already grown, it permanently damages the relationship with their kids. It you does. That, but but it get totally rid of the that humans are just atoms that have no relationship with each other. So that was my whole point. I'm done. You get the floor. Yeah, okay. I, I forget what I was about to say, but that's okay. The bottom line is she's, oh, okay. So for men, what does the Virgin Mary do? She is, actually is, helps you establish a proper role, relationship with women. The truth of the matter is, and it's it's not very politically uh, polite to say so, most women actually want a man to be in charge and are kind of disgusted when he won't be. It's just well, an well, is for women, well, and a lot of women will deny it, but when you ask them, they'll say it's true. Well, they actually look well, okay. huh? Look at the cover of a romance paperback novel if you don't believe me. Yeah, and 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 what's what's been sad about some people, although I know he's changed a lot, I really wish I could get a chance to talk to him, Rouge Fee. The, the guys who were the pickup artists who were giving this stuff on being alpha male and here's how you attract the female because this will set up these hormonal reactions and this evolutionary psychology, all these gizmos because they want an alpha male who's tough and brutal and... Well, that, that all, a lot of the advice was just wrong, but a lot of it was right but warped. And it's just like, because that's our warped world. We think sex is just a, a transaction, uh, 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 an exchanging of chemicals and fluids and tingly nerve endings. And we've reduced it to that and we've uh, uh, lost the plot. It, the, 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 the bottom line though, is that to get back to it, when we get to the Virgin Mary, um, she's not a sex object. It's, and w once you get that out of your head, and it doesn't work. So instead, she's your mom. So as a man, what does it also do to you, though? It also means you really do have a mother who loves you. And you, the, 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 any part of you, any part of you that ever hated your mother, or if you, you know, and remember, hate by hate, I would mean an emotion. Or, or, or whatever. You actually hated your mother. I mean, you may have had very good reason, by the way. I, not only means you have a mom you need to obey, it also means you have a mom you need to defend. It means you have a mom who really loves you and will not abuse you. But I'm also saying it imposes duties on you, too. A good son will not let his mother go hungry. A good son right. will not let his mother be, be insulted in public. A good son so, will not insult his mother. 
uh, and will not sure. allow his mother to be insulted. You know, um, uh, a, a good a good son cares what happens to his mother, um, and, and wants to take care of her and protect her. For girls, what does the Virgin Mary do? Well, it's a little daunting because a lot of women have terrible relationships with their mother. Well, guess what? Let's just repeat. Mary's not a terrible mother. She's the perfect mother. She's the mom we all deserve and didn't actually get. Because you know what? Even if you had a great mom from a great family, your mother has annoyed you, disappointed you, betrayed you, uh, or done something in your life. Um, uh, and has, and it almost certainly, it has to be, you know, things she does that annoy you or make you feel like she's putting you down and you don't, she doesn't even know she's doing it or whatever it is. And there's none of that in Mother Mary. She's a perfect mother. Um, and it gives you that relationship with Jesus that even if he's big and scary, he's actually your brother. Um, your very stern brother, your big brother, but. Yeah, your big brother, yeah. Um, I mean, he, 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 he appears also as the Christ child and the baby sometimes too, but ultimately he's your big brother. It changes all of it. And you actually have a functional family, by the way, when you embrace the Holy Family this way. Um, and it's all mystically tied in with the Trinity. It's one of the reasons why the Trinity is so important. And women, another thing that happens to women, this is something Rachel Brown's written about, and I could already tell it was true. Women have this, a lot of men are oblivious to this, but women are constantly competitive with each other. The, the, the stereotype is that men are, are, are competitive, um, but in fact, females are every bit as competitive. Uh, it's, it's, it's just completely turned in a different direction. Just indirect rather than direct. It's, it's not, it's not, they're not good sports for one thing. And, 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 and by the way, yeah. Competition, their com competition never ends. It's a, That's it's right. A lot and it's a lot more long term and it's a lot actually bitter more bitter than that. And, and, it's, and it's often like, I can't believe they're still having this. I, you know, the man can, men will often be mystified as to what exactly they're fighting about, you know? Um, uh, yeah. And they'd establish hierarchies. And I'll tell you, and one of the real, one of the things that ha tends to happen, especially in an unruly society like ours, uh, queen bees develop usually based on who's prettiest, who is the fairest or who is the most commanding. One of the two. Uh, there's a little balance on that, and and there's a sexual pecking order. There's a who's the fairest in the and 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 who's who's the when Mary's the queen, almost all of that just stops. And it's really funny too. I hang out with uh, like I go to a I go to a, a, a group once a month. That's it's a bunch of Mary devoted people, and the women are so happy, and they all genuinely like each other, and it's a Marian devotion group. And they all yeah. like each other. A really large group of women where they all like each other. No, really. Have you ever seen such a thing? I think I, you can only find I, it there. My beloved wife, who is also a writer, has made a particular study of the psychology of men and women so she can portray them accurately in her stories. And she and I discuss the difference in psychology between the two sexes all the time. So I, I have rarely seen groups of women get along well with each other. Women who want to make friends usually want to make friends with Boys, because even when they're not, even when they're not sexually attracted to them, though there is always a bit of that in the background, in my opinion, uh, they still like the the strength, the straightforwardness, the courtesy. They kind of like being in charge, which they sort of automatically are whenever a woman walks into a room full of guys. They, they at least are, are paid attention to. Yeah. You know. yeah. Now, we. Started this conversation talking about it as a cure for feminism, but we haven't actually explicitly said what's wrong with feminism. feminism. And I think we touched on it by saying feminism is the kind of thing that tries to uh, that that aggravates that kind of hen pecking order battles that that you were just talking about. Yeah, kind of queen attitude. When Mary is the queen, the queen bee in the room is demoted. Um, and it, it's very noticeable. I see it. I really do. Um, uh, women are devoted to Mary are just so freaking sweet. They're, and and, and, and it's, it's because of that. Mary is not competition. She's your mom, but she's your perfect mom, not your mom who makes you crazy. She's your perfect mom now, who really, really loves you. Can you tie that into what's wrong with feminism and why this is the cure for that?
Well, I have so many thoughts. It could go a whole thing. But the bottom line is every feminist has daddy issues and every feminist is uh, dominated by her mother uh, one way or another, even if she grew up without a mother or she left home. Uh, every feminist has a, every feminist has a broken father relationship, um, even if dad made her a feminist. Um, and uh, it's just I could go on from there. But go ahead and tell me what you think. John. My, my theory is, is 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 no more complicated than yours, though I could go on. Uh, I believe that in general, women like strength in men. There may be complex reasons for that. There may be a, a Darwinian uh, uh, incentives for women to be attracted to men who will make good mates. Uh -huh. They like strength in men, which means a woman well, doesn't want necessarily to be stronger than her mate. She sees weak men as weak men drive women crazy because women I don't like it. generally have a mission in life, whether they know it or not, which is to improve the men. Men are basically bears with furniture. We're, we're somewhat uncivilized. Mm -hmm. The only reason for any man to put up with the constraints and the boredom and the rules and the red tape of civilization rather than just live in the woods like a uh, like a savage, the way we all secretly want to, is because we want to get the harvest in so we can get food for the women. So the women will, you know... Uh, have children, so we can have children. Yeah, not just so we can have sex. Not just so we can have sex. But not so just we so we can have, have children and so we can, so we can have whole, family. We can have the whole package deal. Because you are never going to be... Your worst day in your life is going to be something related to your children. You, you think yeah. a bachelor can have a bad day? He can have bad days, but if he, but your best day in your life is also going to involve your children. You think you can be happy as a bachelor? You got nothing on what a, what happens to a father. Okay. True. It opens up it it opens up an entire new dimension to life. You're a two dimensional guy before you're married. You're three dimensional afterwards. Now you're a father. In this modern society, everyone has, as, as, as far as I know, everyone has sex before marriage. I do not know a single man of person of my generation except for one. Who waited until marriage before they gave away the virginity? Okay, right. one couple of everyone I know. Now I don't have many friends because I'm a curmudgeon and you know I'm a pleasant fellow, but still that's an amazing. It wasn't that way in my father's time or my grandfather's time. Oh, my grandfather's time, I think it would be unspeakable. Yeah, and I, I, you that, I tell you, I I'll tell you, you're obviously in the mood to talk about this, but we are getting, we are running a little low on time, believe it or not, and so. I can wrap this up in a, I can wrap this up in a sentence. Go ahead, sir. We've gone crazy about sex, and the reason why is because the women think that they need to be as strong as the men, and that makes the women crazy. And when women are crazy, the men become weak, and when men become weak, it makes women crazy. It's I true. blame feminism. I blame the sexual revolution. I blame no fault divorce. Okay? I, I'm with you on all that. All that springs out of contraception, which means the Catholic Church was right from the get-go. And I don't say that as a Catholic. I believe that contraception was a grave moral evil back when I was an atheist. It's one of the things that made me take a look at Christianity and at Catholicism particularly to make me think that they had some prudence on their side. Whereas before I just thought they were savage barbarians. Mind you, there are natural there are natural ways to not conceive called the natural family planning. And by the way, it's more effective than any birth control if you practice it. Yeah. It's not yeah. it's not a myth to say it doesn't work. It works better than birth control with none of the side effects. But yeah, and all of this yeah, the cure for that is Mary because she's the proper model for womanhood. She, and that's also why feminists hate her because hate ultimately her. she's a mother. And her son, meek and mild Jesus Christ, who drove the moneylenders out of the temple with a whip, is the model for what a real manly man is. You think Achilles or Lancelot is supposed to be your model. That's not quite true. You think the bold samurai who's willing to commit suicide rather than face dishonor should be your model? Or maybe Rambo or some other tough guy. Christ was tough with any of those guys, okay? Yeah. He's he your model. He's but your model. He's also very meek and mild. He is as oh. humble for God as we are supposed to be. Because he's, he's he can be both extremely, totally humble. The, the scriptures literally report that as a child he was completely submissive to both his parents, which is exactly what a Correct. sinless child would be. Correct. Completely submissive. Because there's no ego involved. Pride is ego. Pride is overestimating yourself. Pride is the part of you that wants to be God. We're made in the image of God, so naturally it's a part of us that wants to be God. Yeah. Humility is not humiliation. Humility is a, a proper recognition of your role. Can you imagine a humble feminist? 
No, and there's the thing. The feminists always have issues with their fathers or their mothers. Sometimes they will have fathers who ingrain it in them, but the, the father who's doing that is not doing his daughter a favor. He's doing his daughter, he's teaching his daughter to have an entitlement mentality. Yeah. I, the, you don't have to tell a girl she can't be a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant, whatever. In fact, if you look through history, there have always been women doing that, blacksmiths, sure. whatever. But most women don't want to, those paths. They would like to be mothers. Because how happy are you going to be with no family? I mean, there's some women who can't have children. A whole, whole lot of women are starting to figure this out now. Yeah, a whole lot of women are starting to figure it out, and it's it's going to be bad. But back in the day, there were plenty of nunneries to go to. There were plenty of things that you could do as a woman that was still useful to yourself and to society that would make you happy. We might see a resurgence of that because oh, wow. there's so many women got lied to. But the rat to, is not huh? going to make you happy. The same guys who made fun of the man in the great final suit, the rat race. The competitive world, the business world. Why are they telling women they're going to be happy there? That's right. That's I mean, right. Women are not writer, happy there. If you're a writer, you can be happy in your job, but every other job is you're just there to make money. And you make money so you can have a house, you can have a house, so you can have a wife, you can have a wife, so you can have a family. That's right. And, so and if you have a wife to work, then you don't have a house. The, 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 yeah. And, and feminists don't like her ultimately because she is a mother and God honors the mother. Right. And they hate motherhood. They either hate their own mothers or they hate the idea of being mothers. They think there's something awful about being a mother. Brother, you're not looking deep enough. They hate mothers because mothers are innately, mothers are the least selfish human beings on the planet. They're naturally unselfish. Okay, don't get me wrong. There's some bad mothers and there's some mothers that are crooked. But that's not their nature. That's not what, the, that's not what we expect. Okay? Mothers are less selfish naturally than bachelors. Than children. No one expects children to be altruistic. No one expects young children to, to be unselfish. Two-year-olds, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But, but feminism is based on envy, and envy is based on pride, and pride is the devil's sin. Yes, envy pride of men, envy of... Selfishness. Envy. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, envy of men, which is silly, um, because women were already equal to men. They just had different roles. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and they, did, they had different rights. It's not that they had didn't have equal rights. The equal rights thing is just devilishly dumb phrasing anyway. They had rights men didn't have. Yeah. And they had protections men didn't have. And they had rights, they, they lacked, they didn't have rights some men had. But the, this will get us off on a whole stream where classical, okay. Christian, thinking is that, classical Christian thinking is that your rights flow from your obligations, not the other way around. Rights say, just the appear. Let me just say one thing. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. It's the truth. That's, that's the power that feminists persuaded women to give up mm -hmm. in order to get a seat on the the war council. Governments, voting in government, that's a war council. The reason why we form governments is so men can beat up each other, beat up other men, and take their women. <laughs> or, okay? There's yeah. other too, like justice, that would be nice. Okay? But, but that's not... Are you going to find fulfillment there as a politician? Now, don't get me wrong. I don't mind serving a queen. I think it's a great thing. Uh, but uh, I think women getting into politics are, are going to end up not finding a very satisfying life either. No, it's true. Now, mind you, don't get me wrong. There is a, there, and there not only are, but always have men, women who are not cut in that mold. Sure. What, what we as Christians would say okay. is that is that let me let me just talk for a little bit, John, and then we're going to wrap it up. What right. we as Christians would say is that you know. Women who succeed, Fulton Sheen said this, and so did a whole lot of others, are still going to be the ones, the ones who are happy, even if they never have children, either because that's not what they're called to or because God just didn't, that wasn't in the cards for them. The ones who are most successful are the ones who embrace their nature as mothers in how they approach things and in how they approach people. Uh, and I've seen that in the real world, too. Women who embrace that motherhood is just part of what being a woman is. It's one of the gifts of being a woman, um, that it's not to be thrown away. Now, you don't want to be a toxic mother, but, I mean, the ones who embrace that do very well. Mary's a role model for that. Mary's a role model for, uh, 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 and by the way, when I say Jesus was submissive to her, sure, as a child, as an adult, she was under his care. She still is. She's totally under his authority. Remember, Jesus King her queen, um, it's it's a dynamic of the relationship of the human family that works. And I would argue, even if you're into evolutionary psychology, which I'm not anymore, but if you are, it's also a model that you can see 
works evolutionarily. Um, uh, you know, and, and there's a lot of people who get this, including an awful lot of women I've talked to, even pagan women who totally get it. They're like, no, I, I, but the thing with the Christians is, you know, men and women are of equal value in the eyes of God. We just accept that they're different and that they've been given different gifts based on the fact that they're male or female. Men aren't better. Amen. Men do not, when we say men rule women, it's even kind of the wrong phrasing. Because like I say, when you accept this dynamic, you owe the woman your protection and provision. But she owes you, her, you know, her submission to your, to, you're the one who's going to protect. So she has to listen to you. You're the one who's bringing home, you know, bringing in what she needs. She has to listen to you. But you have to, when she needs something, you have to take care of it. May I? And when she, yeah, go ahead. And then we're going to wrap this up. It's the difference between legitimate authority and illegitimate authority. Yeah. When you talk to a modern person and you say a word like leadership, the only thing they're capable of, of imagining is a bad father who's a tyrant and a bully and a coward who is an illegitimate authority, someone who has no right to the authority. But in real life, there's a hierarchy that goes from the angels to men to animals, and there's hierarchies built into the human psychology and if you believe Jordan Peterson into crab psychology as well. And the, the way those hierarchies operate is there is legitimate authority. Right. When you have legitimate authority being exercised properly, there's nothing better, to be honest with you. Unless you're going to be the king of the world, you're going to be under somebody's authority your entire life. You are. You can sit there and say, no, I'm not. Nobody bothers me around, dude. Do you have, to, buddy, pay, do you have to pay any rent? And, you, buddy, if you're, if you're king of the world and you sin – and you're a Christian king, the Pope can make you walk barefoot through the snow asking for penance. <laughs> still not charge. Don't tell them that or they'll get scared and think we do that to people. No, I, uh, I, I, we did used to. We uh, did used to. Yeah, we, well, the Pope's been known to make kings do things like that. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. even yeah. It, that's one of the things that the Christian religion changes too. When God is the king, that means no man is actually a king. Correct. He's a king in a certain sense, but ultimately he must bow to yeah. the ultimate king. And if you can have St. Francis, who was a beggar, be a saint, you can also have St. Louis, who was a king, be a saint, and one is not more saintly than the other. That's you right. In fact, in fact, in between that, King King, King, King St. Louis and and King and and St. Aquinas, the completely pauperized friar, yeah. who's the greater saint? Yeah, they're, they're different. I mean, all all saints are different in the same way that all sinners are similar. If you know what I mean. Yeah, but the difference yeah. between legitimate and illegitimate authority is this: if Mary is a good role model for any girl who wants to grow up to be a real woman, and Christ is the role model for a man, when Christ rules us, how did he rule? He ruled by serving. He washed the feet of his disciples. That's something that only that's something that the lowest servant in the house would do in the Jewish tradition. True. He saved us by self-sacrifice. So we're not saying you get to be tyrant men. You get to boss the woman around. You get to be in charge, yay for you. That means you got the responsibilities of being in charge. That's right. Now, if that doesn't sound like Roosh and the manosphere and all this BS that bachelors are telling you, it's because bachelors are two-dimensional creatures who don't understand what three-dimensional solid life is actually all about. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. And and you know, don't think that in a you know, don't think that in a, in a marriage, mama's not powerful. When she's backed up by daddy, she's very powerful. But if she's not backed up by daddy, then it becomes very deranged, and she becomes crazy. It's just what happens. And so, yeah, I'm I'm tired of saying it, man. It's true. Um, if you understand Mary, you can't become a woman worshiper. In fact, I'll just add this last thought. Yeah. When I got a full decent relationship with Mary. Uh, Every woman dropped a peg in my eyes. And I realized that, and this is a thing, uh, Fulton Sheen said this, and others have said this, that every man is looking for Mary. Um, I think that a whole lot of guys are kind of expecting their girls, that they're not doing it intentionally, but they're wanting their girlfriends or their mate to also fill their emotional needs of a mother on them. Which is not to say that your wife or your would never should never do anything motherly toward you. I just mean men start looking for their woman to fill that both the role of a wife and of a mother, and it makes the woman crazy and it doesn't work. Yeah. When you have the relationship with Mary, you stop expecting your wife to be the one 
that emotional component is filled now. She doesn't have to take that role. And so in a weird way, I mean, it elevates. In a weird way, women take a peg down because they're not, we, we, we know every woman can't live up to Mary. That, that would be the, the ultimate. We know any given woman cannot live up to her, just like we cannot live up to Christ. Right. No woman can live up to her. The, right. Every woman kind of, st you stop, any urge you had to, uh, that, that was deranged on you, expecting woman to be something she's not, kind of gets better because you, you understand women now better and you understand your relationship to them and, and all that. You know what I mean, John? I do know what you mean. And I have one last question before I log off. Yeah. Catholics are so mean to women and we've oppressed them throughout all the centuries and we've used things like divorce and the lack of contraception as merely whips and chains to enslave them. Why is it that there's so many female saints? Yeah. Why so many? Why so many? Yeah. In in including some who were really tough warriors. I know w there was at least one in the Old West who carried a gun. <laughs> I'm your name, Joan of Arc. Uh, there's a uh, Deborah who was actually one of the judges in the Old Testament. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, so there you go. I know that was a little bit of a ramble, but I want everybody to think about it. Anybody who's thinking that getting a relationship with uh, God's mom, therefore our mom too, should realize that no, she becomes the key to all of that. Women aren't oppressed and never were, and. Uh, women are just different, and and th they're both of equal value in the eyes of God, but they have a complementary relationship. And when you have the right relationship with women, you understand them better. You understand your 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 place. They understand theirs. Everybody's happy, and nobody's worth more than anybody else. Nobody's better than anybody else. You just embrace who and what you are. It's a beautiful thing, and that's actually what a relationship with Mary helps modern guys understand and women too. I truly believe that. And I think that's why feminists hate her because they don't want that. They don't want men and women loving each other anymore. They don't want men and women having families and, 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 and having natural sex that's wholesome between two people where there's no diseases, there's no barriers. They both give, each, give themselves to each other completely freely, lovingly uh, and, and, and creating new life and really, um, Feminists worship Lilith, whether they know it or not. And so, all right, everybody. So this was fun. We'll be back and, here next week. And, and sacrifice their babies to Moloch, whether they know it or not. I know. It's, it's horrifying. So the Carthaginians. please, even if you're going to stay a Baptist or a Methodist or, or, or anything else, contemplate what we've said here you can you can still be an evangelical christian and learn all this cool mary stuff for example oh if it's just too catholic for you come on learn about it this is deep these are gifts god gave us god gave made us a mother and sh made, god made himself a mother and then shared him with all of us why or shared her with all of us why wouldn't you want to know more and even if you're a baptist or an evangelical or a lutheran keep in mind that your grandfather's grandfather was was on our side with this kind of thing at some it's point not, it's not the kind of thing if you don't think the pope has authority in rome or if you don't believe in the real presence of the eucharist fine but that doesn't mean you have to believe that the other members of christ's family don't mean anything to you you can pray by yourself just you and god alone in a room fine catholics do that too but it's also nice to have your friends help you it's also that's nice right it's also nice to have your mother helping you that's right. And she helps us a lot there. And so for, to all of our friends who aren't Catholic, but who love the Virgin Mary anyway, like I'll say it again, uh, the Assyrian Orthodox, the Oriental Orthodox, the Anglicans, the separated Catholics, the Eastern Orthodox, any Protestants who've finally gotten wise out there, all of you who love the Virgin Mary, uh, please tell people about her because I truly believe she is the cure for much if not most of what's wrong with our modern age. So we'll see you next week. Tell her, and tell the Muslims better too. Uh, she's she's the she's she is who will convert the Muslims if they're to be converted. Amen. God bless us. Okay, and so God bless us everybody and Ave Maria.